right. Um, hey guys, welcome to T3. Um, just a few announcements before we start. First of all, it's obviously really, really hot today, so drink lots of water. If you, I saw this really cool sign at the where I was washing my hands that said, if you have not peed in the last hour, that means you're not drinking enough water. And of course, you can totally fill up your bottles at the tap. They're drinkable, um, just like any other. Yeah, don't throw bottles away. They're really reusable. And another thing is, please, when you do use the bathrooms, don't throw trash in the toilets. It's disgusting. Um, right, wear sunscreen, hats, all that shebang. Um, we're going to go through a talk now, and then. Q&A for 20 minutes, and then you guys can always talk to the speakers uh, afterwards at the Media Cafe. My friend Jill here is going to introduce the next talk. Hey guys, this is Digital Whistleblowing uh, with Global Leaks. We have Arturo and Claudio. Yeah, exactly. Put your hands Hello. Up, you guys. Welcome in. Thanks. Hi. Um, so what we're going to talk to you a bit uh, about today is um, a project that has uh, occupied most of our time for the past uh, couple of years. Uh, and uh, we'll explain a bit uh, what it is about, like the reasoning behind uh, us deciding to uh, invest so much time in, uh, in this uh, kind of feat. Uh, and uh, we will talk a bit about, in general, what whistleblowing means and what it means to build uh, an open source whistleblowing platform. So to start, we should uh, try and frame this and understand what we mean when we talk about whistleblowing. Whistleblowing is a whistleblower that decides to inform somebody about some sort of illicit activity or malpractice. And this can either be done uh, in a public and open manner, whereby the whistleblower decides to publicly disclose the fact, perhaps to uh, media or some uh, independent organization that decides then to publish it um, and, um, and, and therefore then hope that uh, their issue gets dealt with uh, and that some change happens. Uh, and why we think that this is a very interesting thing and, uh, and some, you know, it's, it's definitely an area where it is uh, worthwhile to spend some thought is that it also allows uh, for grassroots movements to be able to, uh, from a bottom-up position uh, bring about change. So it's not something that is only limited to um, public agencies or corporations, but it is something that even people like you can do to, uh, to change uh, the reality and the society that surrounds you. Uh, and there are definitely also some examples in uh, the corporate environment uh, and in, uh, in um, public administration environments. For example, in the United States, there is a, a law, the Sarbanes Oskley Act, that requires uh, companies to have a whistleblowing system in place for reasons that have to do with corporate compliance. Uh, because it is, it is a fact that whistleblowing is the, most, the single most effective uh, strategy in fighting corruption. And so um, we, we taught, we, we, at, this, at this particular camp, um, we have uh, a bunch of, of, uh, of events that are also talking about this. Uh, and uh, we, we wrote a, a blog post on the Noisy Square blog about this, uh, mentioning, um, I think, uh, five or six different talks that are happening here uh, on different aspects and different faces of whistleblowing. And I invite you all, if you are interested, to uh, go in and look at perhaps the recordings or follow some of those talks that are to happen uh, to learn more about this. Uh, in general, what we understand uh, learning about whistleblowing is that uh, he can be stronger if uh, uh, spreaded at the local level in uh, every country, in every possible organization, uh, in every environment, uh, will be a common behavior and not just an event uh, with uh, groundbreaking uh, revelation. Yeah, and, um, and so what, what we realized uh, uh, starting this path, of this, uh, uh, this research in, into the world of whistleblowing, is that we discovered that there were already many people there that were doing this for many years. And how they were looking at it was uh, in, a, in a quite different way from how uh, us hackers would look at this. So they were more looking at it uh, from a policy perspective, uh, and, and they really did not have a deep understanding of the technologies that they were using. So we saw things like uh, corporate whistleblowing systems that advertised anonymity but had no actual uh, technical evidence to support that claim. Uh, some of them did not even have HTTPS enabled to perform submissions. 
Um, and so uh, we we decided to take a dive inside of this uh, this this fish of uh, the sea of, uh, of of whistleblowing fish and. Uh, and, and discovered that we could do something to, to help. Uh, and perhaps our technical knowledge and our uh, expertise in the field of security could, uh, uh, could be uh, put to good use in this uh, kind of, uh, of environment. And so I think uh, uh, for, for, uh, for this reason, before uh, we go on, we should clarify uh, what exactly Global Leaks is and what it isn't. Uh, so we are not a leak site. We do not wish to collect any kinds of leaks. And uh, we will never run a leak site ourselves. We have just uh, decided to develop a platform, a piece of software, that other people that are interested in running a whistleblowing initiative and therefore take the legal um, responsibilities and, uh, and uh, all of the, um, the chaos that can ensue from doing such, such a thing, um, they can use our software. But uh, we, we have decided that we wish to not uh, uh, take on this responsibility because uh, uh, you know coding from the Ecuadorian embassy is uh, not as uh, as fun as uh, at home. This so is, <laughs> this is one of our uh, key concepts: the responsibility separation that we understand was needing and uh, necessary on the whistleblowing environment. After the effects of uh, WikiLeaks Cablegate, also recently with Snowden, we understand that uh, when someone has the information, has the ability to decide how to reveal and uh, interact with the revelation is the single point of failure of the whistleblowing flow. Then uh, be able to separate this kind of uh, person and uh, distribute responsibility may be a path for uh, enforced security in whistleblowing process. And so to, to have a look uh, a little bit at, uh, at our timeline, like what, uh, um, how GlobalLeaks has grown to be what it is today, uh, we can see that we, we basically started working on this project. It started as an idea back in 2011. And, and, and at that time, it was, uh, it was still called OpenLeaks. And, uh, and then uh, Daniel Domscheit-Berg came out with OpenLeak. Uh, no, it was called OpenLeak, and then uh, OpenLeaks with the NAS came out and people got really confused uh, because they did not understand like what, what, what it had to do with anything. Uh, and so we decided to change our name to Global Leaks in 2011 and then a Forbes article was published about it. Uh, and then we started sort of playing around with, uh, with this idea and started implementing some, uh, some prototypes. Uh, and uh, around 2012 we came out with the first uh, uh, what we called advanced prototype. So it's, uh, it's something that has actually gone in production, it has been used uh, uh, by this independent news organization in Serbia called uh, Yuzhny Vesti. Um, but it, it was not something that really achieved uh, the design goals that we had in mind. Uh, and so at that point we decided that we wanted to rewrite it completely from scratch. And so we threw away all that code, uh, opened uh, you know, a fre fresh new uh, project directory and started over. And, uh, and, and that is uh, uh, the... Um, you know, the, the, the global leaks that you can, you can see today. Uh, we also got some support from uh, uh, Radio Free Asia, the Open Technology Fund, uh, to fund one year of research and development of global leaks. Uh, and that is, basi is basically what has uh, kept us going uh, until uh, today. Um, and so to, uh, to go a bit more into like a technical overview of what, uh, what this application looks like, um, we, we should start from saying what, what, our, what were our design goals. Uh, and this is because we had realized that we had committed some mistakes in designing the previous version of the software and decided that if we were going to you know, rewrite it from scratch, this better be the, you know, the last time. And so um, we said, OK, what, what would we want from, uh, from an application that is designed to do whistleblowing? And so we said, for sure, it needs to be free software, and anybody uh, should be able to freely use it and uh, and modify it. And that that was definitely uh, you know one of the basic uh, goals. Then it should be extensible uh, and uh, applicable and applicable to um, as many different use cases as possible, because um, whistleblowing uh, is a thing uh, that you can do as uh, as an activist group or organization. Uh, a la WikiLeaks, for example, or as a, as a as a newspaper, um, 
as uh, Al Jazeera and the Wall Street Journal have attempted to do, but you can also run it in a corporate environment. So we sort of tried to figure out how was it, how we could uh, build this application in a way that it could be extensible and, uh, and, um, and we could add support even for the future also for different use cases that perhaps today we were not imagining. Um, and so obviously the user interface is fully, should be fully customizable, so uh, the, the person that runs globally should be able to um, style how it looks and feels. And it should be easy to set up and maintain. This was one of our, uh, this should actually probably have been the first point because this was uh, our, our, main, uh, our main goal was to have something that somebody with zero technical skill could start. And originally we were even more extreme. Like we wanted, our vision for GlobalX originally was having uh, this- GlobalX.exe. Uh, a GlobalX.exe <laughs> that you can download from a desktop computer, click click on it, and you have started a GlobalX node like that. We support the CryptoCat uh, concept of uh, easier than Facebook. <laughs> easier than Facebook, yes. And um, and so with with uh, we soon realized that this was something that was not as easy as we had expected. Uh, however, it is to be said that the technologies are there. So it is something that is technically feasible. It just requires a lot of time and a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, dealing with uh, with shit basically, because you need to make it run on Linux, on OS X, on Windows, where you have three different graphical user interface toolkits that you need to find a way to uh, to use properly so that it looks native, and um, and it's it's not uh, it's not as simple as we had uh, originally envisioned it. Um, however, this was definitely a goal, and even now it is still far easier to set up and maintain than any other existing uh, whistleblowing solutions out there. Um, and so to, to achieve this, obviously, you need to find the right balance between security and usability because uh, um, you can make, uh, you know, a, a super uh, safe uh, uh, and paranoid uh, like leaking, Dropbox, yeah. leaking a platform like Dropbox. However, if to uh, set it up uh, and to maintain it, you need to keep six different running machines and require the journalist to have a dedicated air-gapped machine that they must... Uh, um, only attach USB sticks that they have copied from another machine that is connected to a VPN, and then all of the leaks analyze them in this separated environment, and then once they finally open the leak, they discover that it is spam. So we said, okay, perhaps we can find a right balance, something that makes, makes the, the journalists not want to kill us and, uh, and still achieve uh, a reasonable levels of security. Uh, and so, Obviously, we, we, uh, we, all, we designed it all with anonymity in mind by default. So by default, GlobalX allows for both anonymous submissions but also anonymous hosting, thanks to Tor hidden services. The fact is that anonymity is provided on a technological level because we can't assume that the network is safe. Network can, be, can reconduct the traces from a a tip to a whistleblower, and this kind of protection needs to be enforced on the various network. Inside of the anonymous transmission, maybe also possible that the whistleblower recognize himself or identify himself to a journalist or to the recipient of their submission. But it's important just to start in providing a safe environment in the technological level because it may not be something I understand after. Or you can can go back when you, you start so you stop to be anonymous. Yeah, I mean if if uh, if. If you start off by not being anonymous, you can never go back and be anonymous again. So it's, uh, it's important to, to have this on by default. And if the user willingly chooses to uh, allow a least secure uh, and less anonymous uh, way of accessing the system, they can do so. And so to, to look at, uh, a bit uh, at the overview of how uh, globally sort of looks like is uh, we, have, uh, we have done uh, this, uh, this design choice of uh, composing, uh, decomposing the application into two major components. One is the GlobalX backend component, which all that it does is exposes a RESTful HTTP API. Uh, and by default, uh, what we use as a client to be able to interact with this HTTP API is this <coughs> JavaScript HTML um, uh, client. That does not need to be the only client though. And we have, for example, some people also <clears throat> in the audience, uh, like Marco Pozzado, that is working on uh, on an Android version of GlobalX, 
And we have uh, another person, uh, Nuke, that is working on, uh, on an iOS implementation of Global Leaks. So uh, this is, this is uh, made with in mind the concept that you don't only have to submit over a web interface. However, uh, that is the one that we support by default. And perhaps we wish we will in the future expand the default supported platforms, but for the time being, this is it. Another reason why this, this was done was that by um, uh, decomposing the client component from the backend component, it, it allows you to, in the future perhaps, make the client be something that is bundled with uh, uh, a standalone application. For example, a Tor browser bundle that has inside of it GL client built in. And perhaps uh, at that point you can also expand it to do client-side cryptography. That is something that we currently do not do, but we only rely on end-to-end -end encryption given by Tor hidden services. And so um, another, another uh, interesting thing to, uh, to look at uh, is that, uh, as we were saying, there is this difference between anonymous, like people that interact with the platform anonymously and not anonymously. So how that actually works is that to interact with the platform anonymously, you will contact the Tor hidden service directly. That is, you will have Tor installed on your computer, you will have a Tor browser bundle or whatever, and at that point you will be able to access the application and interact with the system, both as a receiver, as a whistleblower, or as a, a, an administrator of such site. However, if you wish to compromise your anonymity because you don't want to install Tor or because uh, you know, you're just not interested in, in that kind of property, you can do so. And you can access it over Tor to Web, which is another component that uh, initiatives that wish to run a so-called hybrid global leaks installation can do so uh, with, uh, with Tor to Web. And so um, I guess you get a bit more into the, the, the details of what, what exactly are the technologies that uh, uh, that GlobalX is built upon. Uh, it, it obviously uses uh, heavily Tor hidden services, which is the main way that GlobalX gel backend is exposed on the internet. And that is the only way. Um, then the backend that, as we said, exposes this RESTful API is built using Twisted, and in particular Cyclone, which if you're familiar uh, with the um, um, Facebook thing. Tornado, yes. Tornado, Tornado it is basically uh, uh, a copy of the Tornado API, but built on top of the Twisted uh, engine. So it uses the Twisted event loop instead of uh, the, the Facebook Tornado async uh, loop. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it, it works quite well, I think. Uh, Storm, which, has, which is the op o ORM that we're using, if you know anybody else that is using that, I would really like to know. Besides, uh, because <laughs> the besides us uh, and the developers, the developers uh, in Ubuntu. Because they are they, used for a mail, uh, mail man at free. Mail man, the, the new version of Mailman yeah, that sorry. is not yet released. So I don't know. If, if you know of any other humans that are using this, uh, this library, we would really like to, uh, <laughs> to speak to you. And, and grab and, some code <laughs> because. Uh, <laughs> or, or at least the share horror stories. <laughs> Um, but then uh, GL client is, as we were saying, this pure uh, JavaScript um, client-side application that's built uh, on top of AngularJS, uh, and then it has some, uh, some build scripts to be able to take all of this blob of JavaScript and HTML and CSS and everything and spit out this one HTML file, one JavaScript file, and one CSS file so that uh, you, you reduce the number of round trips that you must do over Tor hidden services, which is uh, is quite important. Extremely and interesting things in AngularJS is the separation of the various layer with the controller and the view. Yeah, it it, it's, it's, it's it follows it follows a sort of MVVC uh, pattern, and uh, and we we have uh, certain aspects of the application that are uh, abstracted in in a templating system that you can use to uh, to customize some parts of your page. Uh, still, it, when there are major upgrades in global leaks in, in GL client, um, you, you will probably have to change your top templates to update them. Uh, and it's, uh, it's kind of a pain. But hopefully, as, as the code base uh, gets uh, more stable, we will eventually probably have, have uh, some versions of templates that will work also across uh, different releases. But we'll see. Um, so then everything is basically taked as a dev, dev it's, it's packaged uh, as a dev package at the moment. Uh, we plan also to have uh, in future other, other ways of distributing it, as we were saying, like OS X and Windows, et cetera. Uh, and, um, 
and we, we have a continuous integration running with, uh, with Travis. So we have, uh, um, how much code coverage do we have? Um, I don't know the percentage also because uh, we have uh, implemented the test and not only make a unit test over Python code, but also executing and packaging and building uh, the entire environment and then executing on the virtual environment for making checks uh, if uh, the rest correctly answer. So it's a uh, different kind of coverage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, 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 it, is, it is quite tested. I mean, um, still uh, lots of bugs come out all the time, <laughs> every time we do a release. So I think uh, it is far, far too little tested than it should be, um, but yeah. We have to shrink. Okay, so anyways, um, what, what we have implemented is what you see here. We have multi-language support, so you can translate it on TransFX in your own language. I think currently we support eight different languages. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it is, it is highly customizable, as, as we were saying, so you can set how, um, how the form that the whistleblower fills in gets presented to them. Uh, what fields, what the fields mean, what should be the titles, what should be the hints, etc. It's one of the main differences uh, uh, between GlobalX and the other leak site commonly seen because uh, they usually promote uh, to the whistleblower a uh, just plain bl blank format uh, form with uh, written, please uh, tell us your secret. I instead, uh, what is interesting in GlobalX is uh, defining a specific context of uh, topics uh, that the journalists behind are able to manage, are experts in, in handle off and uh, and they require a specific question for the whistleblower in order to improve the quality of the submission and not just the quantity. And that's the context concept. And yeah, so regarding security, we, we, have, uh, we have a threat model that you can, you can view uh, uh, if you go to globalleaks.org uh, in the security section at the bottom of the page. That is, that is quite detailed and it, it, it analyzes all the different actors that interact with the system. What are the risks associated with every actor? Uh, what kind of uh, properties are given by, by what, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we have also gone through at currently two penetration tests and we are going to get a third one uh, in, in the coming months. Uh, and these have been both from uh, a, like um, reviewing the specification. So looking at our threat model at the application security uh, measures that we are taking, etc., but also at the implementation. So we have also had uh, uh, like black box testing and uh, code audit of uh, of both the client component and the backend component. No, actually, currently we have only done the client component. I think, or no, I guess we have also done. Uh, I guess both in the end, yeah. But we're going to get a more extensive review of the backend component in the months mm -hmm. to come. But uh, in the representation test will be also the XSS part to maybe test it. Yeah, could be. Um, but yeah, so then the application is uh, in, enforces uh, sandboxing on a network layer. That means that the application itself does not do outgoing connections if not over Tor. Uh, and also it is sandbox uh, in, in the way that we use AppArmor to uh, properly secure the application so that it does not uh, do calls uh, that it should, meet, should not be doing, it does not try to access files that it should be not accessing, etc. And we also support currently encryption of uh, files that are uploaded through the system. So when the receiver, which is the person that uh, receives a leak, uh, then accesses the site to download the material, they are encrypted with their public key. Uh, and the same thing happens for notifications, which are sent every time uh, a new leak is submitted, a new comment is written, uh, and uh, a new file is uploaded. And uh, we invite to see the security documents uh, on the bottom of the main site uh, because they are very detailed uh, and uh, express, explain also a different context of usage of GlobalX and the uh, danger derived. So okay. um, this is something that we already mentioned previously, but uh, perhaps we should uh, um, you know, spend another few words on is the difference between an anonymous submission and an HTTPS submission. So by default, as we were saying, we only support anonymous submissions. Uh, however, it is clear that not all initiatives are willing to accept the fact that to leak to your site, you must install this special piece of software, uh, then go uh, to this hidden service address, and, uh, and then leak through that. Uh, because some, some, some users probably you know, don't, have, don't have the skills to do that or are too bored to do that. And, uh, and, and perhaps they have already protected themselves by other means because they're in a you know, public internet hotspot and there they can't download Tor. 
So they can't really do a submission from there, although perhaps that is even more secure than their home network. And, um, and, and this is clear also by some concrete examples of whistleblowing initiatives out there that are very successful. For example, I paid a bribe does not support even HTTPS submissions and have, have uh, no kind of suggestions on how to access it anonymously. However, they are a very successful uh, whistleblowing initiative, also because their threat model is not as strict as other threat models. They are just collecting bribes that people are paying to police officers or uh, you know, corrupt uh, officials, whatever, in, uh, in India, but also all over the world. And, and they're like, you know, I, I, I got to get a passport renewed, I had to pay 50 euros. Or I, I, I crossed that, uh, you know, that, that, that security checkpoint and they asked me for some money. And, and so in this kind of threat model, you don't really need strong anonymity. So in, for these kinds of use cases, we, have also, um, we also allow anonymous submissions. And, and this is done, as we were saying, through tor to web which is this bridge between tor hidden services and the surface web. The main goal of tor to web in this uh, design is to provide the uh, best visibility of the existing uh, initiative, but to not provide the possibility to make an actual, an actual sub submission. So it's much uh, more easier for a, a whistleblower uh, take to know yeah. about a, a whist an initiative and then download the Tor browser bundle and, and all sorts of things. Oh, no. Um, yeah, so I mean, even, even, even just if you don't allow submissions, but you allow to view the, the, the site, that can still be very useful because, uh, um, and so what we have implemented to, um, to uh, resolve this kind of issue is that we inform the user about what is happening and make them make a, a you know, conscious decision of what is happening. And this can also be disabled by the, the node administrator. So if the node administrator decides to not allow any submissions over to web, or no access to their site over Torch Web, they can do so. Uh, okay. But if if they decide to not do so, when the when the whistleblower first visits the site, or any user visits it, they say, "Danger! It appears you are not using Tor. Thus, you are strongly advised to download a copy before continuing." And then, what happens when they click the "Blow the Whistle" button, which is the button that you click to actually perform a submission, is you are shown another disclaimer, and you're told, "Yo, it's serious. I mean, read this shit. It's important." Uh, you, you, can, you can really do some serious mistakes if you don't read this stuff. Seriously, read it, read it. But usually, and there, a user never reads a terminal service or a long description. And then... And then. So, so then, yeah, the, the user is like, okay, sure. <laughs> Next. And at this point, they're, 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 they're faced with a question. And, and, uh, and I guess we, we, we could ask you to, to, uh, to answer this for us. And, uh, and so, which of the following statements is true? HTTPS protects my identity but not the content of my leak. HTTPS protects the content of my leak, but not my identity. HTTPS does not protect the content of my leak, nor my identity. HTTPS does not protect my identity and the content of my leak. So, so which, which of the three do you think it is? Do you think it is one? Okay. Do you think it is two? You think do you think it is three? three? Do you? Do you think it is four? Oh, <laughs> okay. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. <laughs> Sorry. It's true. You must, uh, you must go back to the step and uh, to the beginning and understand properly what was written. However, if instead you said too that uh, HTTPS does protect the content of my submission, but uh, does not protect my identity, you would be, you would be presented with this screen, and and you would then be able to proceed to perform uh, a submission. Okay, we have nine minutes in the other side. Uh, use cases. Uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have identified a, a series of, uh, of um, possible use cases that, uh, that GlobalX could apply to. Uh, and these perhaps are not uh, the only ones, but perhaps most of them will fit inside of these, uh, these categories. And we also have some currently running examples of these. Uh, and the first case is investigative journalism. And this is uh, what most of you uh, probably have heard about uh, whistleblowing because it, it is uh, that which is uh, most publicly present. Uh, and it is uh, media outlets, news organizations um, that decide to uh, run a leak site for the purpose of collecting tips uh, to then uh, do some work on and understand if it is something that is news newsworthy and to write about. Uh, and in these cases, what we recommend is to only allow anonymous submissions because probably the kinds of things that you will be receiving leaks about are 
are quite uh, can put the the whistleblower into uh, you know serious harm. On the usage case is uh, defined also by investigative journalism and is one of the cases where the anonymous submission is invited, but then maybe on the relationship between the whistleblower and the journalism, the identity is requested for being more trustworthy or uh, a personal meeting is also requested by the various person. Offshore leaks uh, has been a, a case. Uh, yeah, I mean, th those, yeah, what, what the journalists, this uh, Global Leaks just is a system to allow anonymous communication between uh, one, one whistleblower and a set of receivers. So if, uh, if the whistleblower decides at a certain point that they wish to reveal some aspects of their identity because they believe that will help the journalists do a better job, they can obviously do so. Uh, however, it must be a conscious decision that they make uh, uh, when they are relating to, to, the, to the journalist. Some other examples, as we were saying, are public agencies that uh, um, have clearly the interest in uh, collecting uh, um, tips on malpractice and, and things that are going wrong inside of uh, their government. Uh, and, uh, and this can be either um, for tax evasion reasons, as uh, the US IRS whistleblowing uh, program already does, uh, for uh, spotting, for example, market manipulation or, uh, uh, or corruption. And as we were saying, um, for, for when dealing with corruption, whistleblowing is, uh, is the only proven effective uh, strategy. Yeah, commonly is separated between the internal whistleblowing and the external whistleblowing. With the internal one, only the uh, participant of the public uh, uh, agency will report uh, for an uh, issue that uh, are uh, inside of the agency or, or, or otherwise it should be an external public where everyone can report uh, for feedbacks. Yeah, you, you, you can design them in, in multiple ways. However, let, let's say that the basic thing is that uh, a public agency receives some leaks and, uh, and, and there are already like some examples out there of this uh, that does not have any kind of protection of the whistleblower or any basic security. Uh, like I think the EU antitrust one is the one that doesn't even have HTTPS. But, um, but yeah, so obviously as we were saying it also applies to, to uh, corporations that are required by some laws in some countries to have in place a whistleblowing system. And, uh, and these tools are generally uh, integrated into the you know, organizational model of that uh, particular uh, company. Uh, and, and usually who will receive these tips uh, is, uh, is somebody inside of the internal audit or uh, in higher management inside of the company that will evaluate them and decide what should be done about them. Uh, and these, uh, you know, are required by the Sarpens Oxley Act in the U.S. and uh, uh, the Uno in Italy. And, um, however, you know, current solutions lack an proper anonymity and protection for the whistleblower. Uh, and another very interesting use case that is uh, something that perhaps we, we feel more, uh, more interested in helping out and in uh, promoting, uh, here especially, is, uh, is how it relates to... Uh, to possible initiatives that any one of you can run. Uh, and that is uh, simply a group of people that are very passionate about a topic that uh, decide that they wish to do something to uh, transform some information that they receive on that topic into some action, which can be either public disclosure or, uh, I don't know, going to the authorities and warning them about the fact, collaborating with some other news organizations to uh, write a story about it. Or make uh, independent uh, analysis and uh, information. Yeah, and so you, 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 you say, I, I, I know a lot about this. I have a lot of contacts in this field. I have uh, a lot of knowledge, a deep understanding of this issue. And I think that if I just had these documents, if I just had some people that would tell me about these fac facts, I could do something to change it. Uh, and, uh, and so with if, if, if you have this, uh, this sort of um, need or, 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 or feel strongly about something and you think that if you had some, some more information, some more documents leaked to you about it, you can say, I wish to start a Global Leaks node. And perhaps you don't need to necessarily be the person that receives the information. You can just be the person that coordinates this, uh, this, um, this, this node and uh, promotes it and does campaigning for it. Um, but then other people that perhaps are even more knowledgeable than you on the, on the topic will be the people doing the analysis. Um, and so, as we're saying, for corruption, this is something that is, uh, that is highly effective. 
And so what 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 we uh, what we want from I mean how how I guess if you are interested you can uh, help us out and we can uh, we can find some way to uh, uh, to collaborate. As we were saying, there's uh, there's there's some there's still tons of code to be written and uh, and lots of uh, lots of things to play around with. So if if you uh, if you're into Python and Twisted and such, you should uh, check out uh, the the GL backend repository and uh, and see if there's some way to uh, um, you know to hack on it. If you know JavaScript or you uh, you are very good at uh, making uh, things uh, look very pretty and nice and shiny, um, def Global X client definitely needs a lot of love. And uh, and I think that uh, if there is somebody here that uh, wishes to uh, uh, give some of that love to GL client, uh, I think uh, it will accept it uh, very happily. Um, and. Um, and 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 then we also have, as we were saying, this uh, a whole system to do continuous integration and builds, and uh, and you know it's it's kind of a mess system at the moment. It needs to be tested, and uh, it needs uh, it needs a lot of work, and uh, and so yeah, I guess if if you're if you have any of the required skills, uh, you could uh, you should uh, help us out. But at this point, need to be also to expand it in uh, RPM or other packaging system uh, if they can be easily integrated. Yeah, or OSX and all these other things. I mean, we hope in the future of, to have a gel backend running on Android, so you can also plug on your uh, Ouya yeah. box uh, or uh, your cell phone. And uh, and also obviously you can run your own initiative. And you can say, um, you know, I'm passionate about this topic, as we were saying before. And you can you can start your own global league site. Uh, and if you if you have already some ideas, we should perhaps meet together later after this talk and uh, and and brainstorm some ways to to make it happen. Uh, we also have this thing that we call the fast track program, which is basically um, a way for which we can help you out even more directly to run. Uh, um, a, a global X initiative by coming directly to where you are at and doing a hackathon uh, in person. If you are willing to uh, to stand for two or three days, uh, uh, three to four smelly hackers and uh, <laughs> and lots of uh, lots of entropy. So that said, we are also going to be doing a workshop in an hour at uh, Noisy Square, and uh, and you should uh, you should come. Ten, one. no noisy square. Ten two, noisy squ the no, the big one. There are two ten of noisy ah, square. But the big one, I think, there. right? Yeah, no. the big one, the one that ha that is like uh, brown and um, and looks like a yeah an Indian thing. Um, In the workshop, we, we can uh, start a uh, uh, various global initiative and show how it should be configured uh, and uh, how the context and the receiver are uh, set up. Uh, how does it work? Have a flow, uh, and such. Yeah. And so, if you want to learn more, here uh, are a bunch of links. Uh, so the, the main website where you can uh, find uh, links that point to most of everything else. Uh, the wiki contains a lot of information on how to uh, set up both a development environment to start hacking on Global Leaks, but also how to install the software on, uh, on Ubuntu and Debian. Um, and then uh, you can join us on IRC and uh, uh, mostly idling on, uh, on Global Leaks on OFTC. Uh, and uh, and as we were saying, we're we're mainly mainly hanging around at Noisy Square or at the Italian Embassy. So, but we are both like. So, if you leave a question on uh, IRC, we can see it uh, some yeah. after. Um, and so, yeah, if you if you want uh, some grappa later tonight and uh, discuss whistleblowing, we we will always be there with uh, lots of uh, whistleblowing and grappa. <laughs> so, so, so that said, uh, I guess thank you for your attention. And uh, are there any questions? Um, are, are there any questions? Cool, we'll, we'll go to the back. You can keep your questions straight to the point, like 10 seconds each. And if you guys have comments for a more intimate discussion at the Media Cafe later. I have two questions, actually. Um, so yeah, you, told, you said it was like for most, like, as much as possible basic users who don't have like, technical skills, right? Uh, still, they need to understand PGP, right? Because it's PGP encrypted, so they, so they don't need, they need to understand like the key pair thing, the public encryption, etc. Yeah. That's right. You, we are planning. Yeah, I mean, so. Oh, is this finished with your question? Oh, uh, That's I, I the can first ask one. my second question, actually. 
Well, the things we are uh, we agree with the analysis, but uh, the role of the node maintainer or, or or the people who promote the initiative is also provide the teaching and support to the receiver. In example, we are trying an experiment uh, with a, a a foundation, and uh, they. Uh, want to teach to the journalist how to use TACE, the secure operating system, with uh, embedded their own uh, PGP keys, able to decrypt the, the things received. It's part of the teaching of the support of the minimal security. And, and I may add that it is, uh, I mean, this is an optional feature. It, it has just been added, and it's not like a core feature of Global Leaks. It is something that if you want, if you decide that um, for your leak site, it makes sense in your threat model to have PGP encryption. And you think that you have the time and resources to uh, invest in training journalists, and you think that the journalists are s smart enough to understand it and actually use Tails and not just say, fuck this, I'll just use my, my home computer. No, I do think it's a great feature. Right? Uh, <laughs> and, and so like how this is actually happening is, is that there is somebody that is going to pre-configure every single key and like during a day have this swarm of journalists uh, assault them and one by one tell them, okay, you plug this in, let's configure your email, let's generate a key, enter your password, and, and like babysit them through and in the end they will have a Tails that is set up and they have two icons on their desktop which is open notifications, open leaks, and that's it. And, and that is, that is their, their work environment. Well, so and, and it's clear that this can, does not really apply well to any, mm. any initiative. Like, if, if, you, if you don't have uh, the resources and the time to spend in that because you're already so busy promoting your initiative and so busy doing a bunch of other things, you can disable it. Okay, a second, second point. Um, I guess sometimes there are users on crappy connections uh, in some countries where the internet is not so good. Yeah. Uh, and I guess sometimes they might have to submit like videos or kind of big files. So have you thought about a way they could like doing like you know, start uploading a part of a file and then, you know, continuing. Yeah. I, I guess in this terms of security, it's mi it might be very difficult. I mean, if you use PGP encryption, for instance, but have you thought of it? Well, yeah, I mean, the the, the, the file upload component is uh, is a pain in the, it's, it's really painful. It's, uh, we have lost countless hours over that and still it is missing like a bunch of things. For example, one, one is resume support. We really want to uh, support resuming of files because, uh, it can happen that your connection fails and you need to be able to restart uh, a new, you know, reopen a new socket and start resending from that point. And the library that we're using supports it, however, we have not uh, yet had the time to... Uh, but it isn't a ticket, I think. <laughs> there is a ticket on it. But, uh, also in the Tor networks, the stability differs and then that this kind of variability needs to be managed. Cool. Any other questions? Um, so my question is, have you found that there's sort of like an upper limit in terms of file size or sort of like what is the optimal file size for people to actually push through? I know that's kind of a weird uh, basic so question. Yeah, we, we, have, we have encountered some, uh, some issues with, uh, with right. what? It is currently fixed, but it, it does not have to be that way. I mean, we can in the future add support for... I mean, it, it, it's, it's a limitation in, in various libraries that we're using. We need to basically add support for arbitrary file size in various components in Global Leaks. One is Web, which I think now supports... Yeah. Uh, ah, it's everything fixed. Okay, so Web is done. Now, also on Global Leaks... Ah, so we can upload the... So we, we have uh, infinite uh, file... Has it been tested? Great. Okay. Okay. Whoa. It works then. Okay. So we, we have it then. I guess then, yeah. Uh, we remain at when uh, we have uh, limits of uh, some megabytes because it was stored on RAM, but now, uh, yeah. great job. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, I just would like to add uh, a comment uh, regarding the workshop that we will be doing uh, in uh, one hour time at the Noisy Square. Uh, what we will go through to the workshop, if you would like to start your own initiative, if you would like to 
understand or even just discuss how you will be able to start an activism initiative uh, by soliciting whistleblowers. We will discuss about the overall process. I mean, how, uh, which kind of a focus from the organizational <coughs> point of view you need to have, what things you, you must have uh, uh, clear, like uh, how will the initiative will solicit whistleblowers by spamming, by Google advertising, by printing, uh, I don't know, uh, papers over train station, whatever. But uh, we will go through over this kind of knowledge that is part of uh, what we are trying to collect by helping various adopters and creating a sort of a shared knowledge base. And uh, just uh, uh, there are other organizations that uh, are joining with us also to provide uh, legal support and advocacy tool and communication support for initiative that would like to start soliciting whistleblower. Great. Um, we have a few more minutes left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just a small suggestion. I I I am checking the global leaks with double L dot org. It's leaks. not us. No, it's it's not even uh, registered. With one L, global leaks. Yeah, but don't you think it's uh, a squatting? Bit, uh, sorry. You mean somebody that will squat it? And yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, we could register but it. Well, uh, in I the YouTube exists a, a channel called the Global Leaks, but uh, it talks about uh, tsunami and uh, liquid drop. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's now it's not uh, registered anymore, so maybe it's uh, a good idea. Uh, we have some stickers yeah. uh, with uh, one L only. Sprinkle the string. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no one around for that. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work. All right, I guess that's it. Thank you, guys. Um, we have one, a couple of announcements before you go. We need more volunteers, so if you're willing to volunteer, please go to the volunteer sent, uh, tent in field to C. Also, I'll, all kitchen are closed from 2.30 to 5 because of the heat, so Toasties in bar area, I think. All right, cool. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, and the next talk will happen in five minutes.